So I love X-Men back in the 90s watching that cartoon. That's how I fell in love with the X-Men. So let's see how 20th Century Fox turned out with their third film in this new rebooted film series. I'm Brandon Keith Avery, and this is just my opinion. So I remember back in 2011 when the trailers first started coming out for X-Men First Class. At that time, I could care less about this franchise. I mean, it was horrible. I wanted all the rights to go back from Marvel. But they were starting over with the origin of Magneto and the origin of Professor Xavier. And I gave it a try. I went in with open arms, with an open mind. And my goodness gracious, it blew me away. I thought that movie was a perfect 10 out of a 10. And that was back in 2011 and still five years later. That movie is still just on up on a high level for me as just quality entertainment and just a great, fantastic X-Men film. And then Days of Future Past came out and I thought it was a great film. I thought it was a good film. Great. Had a lot of awesome things in it, but it just wasn't as good as X-Men First Class for me. So going into X-Men Apocalypse, I saw the first trailer, the second trailer, the third and the fourth because they did release a lot. And my excitement level for this movie was just like, okay, like a week or two before the film came out, if they were just to say, hey, we having some type of difficulties, we're going to postpone the film for a whole nother year, I wouldn't gripe or complain, I really wouldn't care. So that's just how I felt about X-Men Apocalypse going into it. And now that I've seen the film, I have to be honest, it's not that bad. It was actually good. I don't want to say that it was amazing or great. It is a lot better than Batman v Superman, but it's still nowhere remotely close to as good as Captain America Civil War. It's just right there in the middle. But I did enjoy the film. Overall, with the story, I understood everything. I was able to follow all the characters. I was able to follow the plot. But there was just nothing amazing that jumped out at the screen, for me at least, until the very end. And I want to touch on that. One of the major problems that I think this film has is it was trying to tell two stories at one time. And it just didn't do that seamlessly. Um, it was just kind of bouncing back and forth. And those two stories are apocalypse and his origin and being walking up in the modern day and then also the x-men over here on another side with them lost trying to come together and while i did like majority of the things that apocalypse had to offer initially i did not like what they were doing with the actual x-men and the reason why is this is the third film in this rebooted franchise. First, we had X-Men First Class, directed by Matthew Vaughn. And in my opinion, he's pretty much the best comic book uh, director out there. And then Brian Singer came back for Days of Future Past. But between those films, there was a jump of 10, 11, or 12 years. And while I thought X-Men First Class was perfect in the ult one of the ultimate team movies, it kind of felt like all that was diluted and erased when it came to first class. It's just kind of like everything that they built up that I loved in first class was completely depleted in days of future past. And then again, it feels like the exact same way with X-Men Apocalypse. Yes, some of the characters come back from the previous films, but I feel that the unity that was brought together from the characters in those past films is just non-existent anymore and we're having to tell an origin story over and over and over again after the third film and I just didn't like that. I mean with the third film I should feel that they are have a core team but no the, with the X-Men plot within Apocalypse the X-Men again are scattered about and they have to come together again to save the day and I'd rather not have seen that. I'd rather just seen them, you know, kind of teamed up at the beginning and then have to tackle the bad guy. But it just didn't play out for me that way. Now, going back to Apocalypse, I liked him, but I didn't like him. His voice would change back and forth to a number of different tones uh, throughout the movie. And I did like that. But what I did not like is every time they showed him close up, you know, I just really wasn't getting any feeling of a threatening mutant that could, you know, destroy the whole world. But when they were zoomed out on his face, I mean, that was a lot better effects or makeup or whatever you want to call it. But when they were zoomed in, it just felt like a guy with blue makeup on. Now, I've never really made a video about all the previous X-Men films before with Holly Berry being Storm. But I think that role was completely miscast. I mean, I love Holly Berry. She's a beautiful woman, very talented actress, but she just was not 
cast right as Storm. But now we have a new Storm, and I forgot her name, but I liked her. I liked the introduction that we had with her character. I mean, I liked the introduction that we had with most of the characters, which well, we had an introduction with Jean Grey and Cyclops. And as, if you know the story, you know that there is a romantic relationship but blooming between those two that will come to fruition later on in the years and i love seeing these two get along in his infancy and it showed promise for a lot to come in the future um something that i did not like about jean gray is i think they kind of power her up too much in this movie um if you know you the story of jean gray you know that she becomes the phoenix later on and then dark phoenix I'm not saying that they put all of that in this movie. And I'm, this is a non-spoiler review. I'm not going to spoil anything for you. But if you've seen the film already, you kind of know what I'm talking about at the end. I just kind of think that they should have dialed her power down just a little bit. But as far as Cyclops is concerned, he was probably one of my favorite characters in the whole movie. I mean, he's young, he's innocent looking, and he just wants to do the right thing. And that's just kind of the Cyclops that I knew back from the 90s cartoon was, you know, he was kind of the leader in a way. And no, he was not the leader in this because, I mean, these guys are like 11, 12, 13, maybe, you know, young teenage years old. So he hasn't come into their role yet as a young man. But I could definitely see this Cyclops developing in the future for more X-Men films to come. Now, Magneto, on the other hand, you know... I have two characters that I didn't like, and I will mention the other one later. But Magneto, he was very disappointing to me. I mean, such a badass, amazing character. Someone that I just absolutely loved in first class. Thought it was okay in Days of Future Past. But what they did with his character in Apocalypse was just a complete abomination to what I loved before. I mean, he's already been through hell and back in hell again. And... I mean, I understand, like, let me just say this. Going into this, mo okay, if you know Apocalypse and his story, he comes back all the time. He's nearly immortal, and he's always recruiting these four horsemen to do his deeds, his dirty work to help him out, rule the world, whatever. And going into this, fan and I don't know much about Apocalypse. I I'll be honest. I mean, I know just a little bit, but his powers to me are, are off and on. I it's just inconsistent to me. I just don't know in this movie or in, in the comics or in the 90s cartoon. But me not knowing Apocalypse and, you know, what he's trying to do. When when I was seeing the trailers for this movie, I was, gonna, I was really disappointed if Apocalypse was mind controlling all the X-Men. I wanted them to have a good reason as to why they chose to be on his side. And this may be considered a little spoiler, but I don't think so. There was no mind control. The, the characters had a conscious mind and decided to follow Apocalypse. And they did give Magneto a valid reason for wanting to do that because he just fed up with humanity in the world. But it's just the way that they did it. I just thought it was just too much and completely unnecessary. And I'm just sitting there watching just like, oh my gosh, I can't believe y'all did that. I mean, this character has just been through too much and... I just did not want to see that because there were some innocent characters that reached their demise that had to do with Magneto, and I just, I didn't like it. I, I mean, and, and as, as far as Magneto is concerned, they just turned him into a whining, sobbing character that doesn't care about anything in the world. He just threw out all of his plans and motivations and, and, and strong comings that he had in the previous films out the window into somebody I, I just don't give a damn about, frankly. I don't know why they did this to one of the best uh, fictional characters in anything, but they just did not do Magneto any justice for me, and it put a bad taste in my mouth. Now, as far as Angel, he was cool. I'm not really a fan of his character. Uh, Havoc was cool. He's the older brother of Cyclops. Now, Psylocke, I don't know much about her character. She was cool. I liked her presence. She didn't really have that many lines, but she did look like somebody that you didn't want to cross the wrong way and that she would chop off your head with that samurai sword or a psionic blade. And her powers, which I just said, a psionic energy, I really don't know much about it because I just don't know much about her character. I really don't know. I don't remember Psylocke being in the 90s cartoons that much way back in the day. Because that's where I got most of my X-Men knowledge from. But I will say this about her costume. It is just quite stupid to see her in her comic book costume. I mean, there is no reason for her to be dressed like that. 
Yeah, she looked hella sexy and fine and all that good stuff. And if that's what the studio was going for to sell tickets or whatever, they did a great job there. But her costume served no function at all. It served no purpose. Bringing in another comic book movie that came out a few weeks ago, Captain America in his uniform, he was enlisted in World War II and went through a super soldier serum and had to go around the country to let the people know that Captain America is here, you know, to spread the good word and word of mouth and all that. So he wore a flag to as a symbol of hope. Black Panther has his costume because it's literally armor. Iron Man and War Machine, what they're wearing is literally armor. The same thing with Ant-Man. His costume makes him shrink and grow. There's a function to these characters' costume. Scarlet Witch and Hawkeye, those are just clothes. I mean, have you seen Scarlet Witch's comic book costume? It would look ridiculous if she would have put that on on the big screen. So with Psylocke with the, the skin-tight purple spandex with all these slits and stuff, yeah, it looks sexy, but it also looks stupid. Her character didn't do much, but the little bit that she was on screen that I liked, other than her costume. Nightcrawler, he just didn't do it for me. Um, I just didn't really care for the guy. Um, I wish they had the same look of Nightcrawler that they had from X2, X United. That came out, what was that, 2003, 2004? I mean, this Nightcrawler wasn't bad. It just didn't do anything for me. And honestly, if they would have said, hey, Nightcrawler's not coming back to the next film, I would not care. Some other characters that I not like the decisions that they made was Beast and Mystique. Starting out with Beast, a lot of people were complaining when the trailers first came out for X-Men Days of Future Past. They're like, wait a minute, wait a minute now. I saw X-Men First Class and Beast shot himself in the foot with that special mutant needle crap and it made him transform into the blue mutant. So why is he back in his human form in this? And then when you saw Days of Future Past, you found out why. But they still try to give you that same lame reason as to why he's in his human his human form, his non-blue form. And I don't like that. Beast is a badass. I want to see him beast. I don't want to see the 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 actor. I want to see the blue fairy fellow jumping and swinging around. And the, I mean, I don't want to spoil anything because you may consider that I spoiled you earlier. But I just don't like that they did that. Keep Beast blue. Another the exact same thing with Mystique. Keep her blue. And with Jennifer Lawrence, I mean, she's a great actress. And a lot of people don't like how uh, Mystique is serving the forefront in all the X-Men movies. Because in the X-Men that most people know, she's not a main character. She's like someone that was pulling the strings from uh, from the behind the scenes. And I can understand that argument, but it doesn't bother me because... These prequels here, First Class, Days of Future Past, Apocalypse, these are prequels to the 90s show that most fans know and love and or modern day. And so by the end of this film, and I kind of theorized this before I saw it, is she's probably going to take a back door to popping up in the middle of all the characters in future X-Men films. And I don't, I don't think the actress Jennifer Lawrence wants to do that anyway because her performance in this movie, it, it was a, a, a huge step down to what she gave us before. I mean, I don't, she, it just really feels like she just did not give a crap, does not give a damn about this role anymore. Like she was like, look, I'll be in the movie, but I'm tired of that makeup sitting there, like, no, we got to cut that in half, you know? And you can tell, I mean, the effects with her makeup was damn near horrible. No, it was horrible. I mean, it, it was great. In, uh, oh my goodness. It was great in all uh, the previous other, I'm going to mess this thing up. Hold on. And I'm gonna keep the video going, but anyway, it was great, and it was great in all these other uh, previous films. But the makeup that she had in this film here, it was just like, okay, you can tell that they were just trying to rush, and you know, hurry up and get the scene and get her, you know, dressed up. It, it just did not look the same. It does not look right when they had when they were showing Mystique zoomed in with her blue makeup. It just did not look good. It looked bad, and it clocked me completely out of the film. I mean, I didn't care to be there. She, You could tell that she didn't care to be there. I mean, it, it just wasn't, you know, what that was, in my opinion. Now, as far as um, Quicksilver is concerned, and uh, actually, before I talk about Quicksilver, I want to say something about Mystique and Nightcrawler. And this was a complaint of mine that I had. Uh, well, I'll tell you about the complaint I had going into Days of Future Past. I wanted them to acknowledge that Quicksilver was the son of Magneto. And they did that in a nice little nod, and I'll give them that. 
But also, if one thing that really pissed me off uh, with how they followed up with first class is now Laura Sh- Lauren Schuler Donner is one of the producers for 20th Century Fox that produces these films. And I don't know the lady, never met her, never talked to her before. I'm, I'm pretty sure she's really nice. But in my opinion, she does not know what the hell she's doing with these X-Men films. Because as far as characters are concerned and storytelling. And the reason why I say storytelling is building on, continuing on the strong foundation that you built on from the past. What I mean is X-Men First Class, that's probably one of the best endings that I've ever seen in my entire life in cinematic history. Not the best, but one of the best. Because it showed the two factions splitting apart with people going on with Charles Xavier and people going with Magneto. And then they they uh, uh, rescued the Diamond Girl. I forgot her name at the end. And you saw that uh, Mystique and Azazel were on the same team. Azazel was the red demon figure from first class that could teleport. Mystique is blue. When I, As soon as I started off, I was like, hell yes, Mystique and Azazel are going to go smash. And then they're going to have the child Nightcrawler. Nightcrawler is going to get his blue color from Mystique, and he's going to get his teleportation from Azazel. It's perfect, but they completely threw that out of the window with first class uh, by killing Azazel. And then, uh, like, why would you kill off a character, you know, that especially off screen, that the audience has come to know and love? That's something that we didn't see before in the the earlier X Men films with Bryan Singer. But so going, I was at the end of uh, first uh, Days of Future Past. I'm just saying to myself, well, I guess we'll never get a Nightcrawler because uh, Azazel's dead. But no, we got a Nightcrawler, and I was like, okay, maybe they're gonna create some, some make some creative way to where Nightcrawler is the son of Mystique. But did they do that? No, they didn't do that at all. I don't know why that would have just you know brought more character development between both characters, knocking two birds out with one stone. But no. Um, she does not know what she's doing. And the reason why I know that it was her that made the decision in first class is if you watch the special features, she was talking about her having a mandate of how she wanted, you know, new characters. And it, it, you have to watch it. I, um, you just have to watch it. But I'm just saying like, you know, ma'am, that's why this movie wasn't as good as I wanted it to be because of your involvement. Of course, you're going to be involved, but sometimes you just make the wrong decisions but when laura shrill donald it seems like she makes a lot of the wrong decisions but hey that's just me of course wolverine made a cameo uh which i did not like um i just don't like a character that has animantium uh blades in his hand that's going around stabbing people and there's no blood or when people are emptying a clip on him with a bunch of machine guns that it's not slowing him down at all bullets not i mean it's not showing blood anything it's just it's just cheap 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 now, it may seem like I hated the sim, and I really didn't. I mean, I really enjoyed it, but there was nothing that had to me at the edge of my seat that was grabbing me. I was just watching a bunch of scenes that flowed pretty smoothly together um, until the end, and it had a strong ending, but kind of got really sloppy in the end. I do like Apocalypse as far as you know him just waking up. You know, he was ruling the world thousands of years ago. He taking a nap wakes up and he was looking at the world like what the hell is going on what is this no this is whack y'all got these people over here ruling these people these people over here you know y'all are following blind leaders what's going on no i need to put a stop to this so i like that and i like when a character has a certain plan but there's a wrench thrown into his plans where either slows him down or him going with his plot within the story he learns something and tries to adapt his plan to make it more efficient And they did that with his character, with him trying to link up with all the other mutants, which I thought was actually pretty creative and was getting me on board with the film at that point than I already was before. And I do also want to mention Quicksilver. He did have a uh, a great scene in this movie, but I did not enjoy it as much as Days of Future Past. And the reason why is... They they're just making him too fast, like too too fast. Uh, he he just he's quick service fast, but he's not that fast. And also, in his uh, scene where he had a moment to shine, it was just too comical. I mean, it, it's like this guy has a billion lives, and he knows that he can never die. So whether it's the end of the block or the end of the the world, it, he just has an attitude or persona that he knows he's not gonna die and he's gonna be okay. And that just kind of takes the stake out of the film for me. You know, and it just doesn't do anything for me. So it kind of just sounds like I, I have mixed feelings about all the characters and I do. Um, there's more good than bad. But in the story, you know, it, it, it flows all the way through. 
things do get a little sloppy at the end with the battle. Uh, there at the very beginning, it is kind of boring. I'm wondering, hey, you know, what are y'all going? What are y'all doing? What's going on? You can tell that all the destruction that they tried to create is a giant set with blue and green screen in the back. It just didn't look real and authentic to me. But at the very end of the battle, there is an epic comic book uh, Marvel moment that will have fans like myself kind of just scream out like, ah! You know, where people are blasting all their power and stuff. That was cool. That was fun. And I really did enjoy that. But when everyone is using their powers, especially Apocalypse, there is some inconsistency with his powers to where I was saying, okay, if you could do this now, why did you do this before? Why do you even really need the horseman if you can do this? I really just don't understand. I mean, it was it's a fun film um, that I went in with mediocre to low expectations. And if you go in like that and not expecting the world, I think you will have a good time. And I will say the last 10 minutes of the movie is the best for me. Also, the way the, the, the film closed out right before it cut to black and showed the credits, that is exactly what I want to see, and it gives me hope for the future. So it's time to rate this thing. I did enjoy the film overall. It did have some problems. There was no, no pacing or editing issues. Um, at times, it did kind of get a little boring, but it was still flowing through because there was just not that much action at all. It really wasn't any action until the end. And then that nice comic book moment that'll get you screaming like a crazy comic book fan that I know you are. So if I had to rate X-Men Apocalypse out of a 1 out of a 10, I would give it a 7.5 out of 10. I gave X-Men First Class a 10 out of a 10. I love that. I give X-Men Days of Future Past a 9 out of 10. And I give X-Men Apocalypse a 7.5 out of 10. So guys, have you seen X-Men Apocalypse yet? Do you want to see it? Have I turned you on? Have I turned you off? Do you agree with me or do you disagree with me? Let me know in the comment section below. Let's get this conversation going and keep it flowing. If you like this video, go ahead and give me the thumbs up and if you didn't like the video that's fine just leave me a comment below why and still give me the thumbs up since you watch this on youtube go ahead and subscribe to the youtube channel so become one of my subscribers to get all the content that i have to provide in the past and in the future and if you would like a written review for this movie or any other films that i've written in the past head over to the site you can find it at justmyopinion.net or any other social media platforms. You can find me on Instagram and Twitter at JustMyOpinion84 or Facebook.com slash JustMyOpinion. So guys, thank you for tuning in for my review slash opinion for X-Men Apocalypse. And share the video, guys. I'm not going to get mad if you share the video. And before you go, don't forget that my name is Brandon Keith Avery, and that's just my opinion. Peace.